What's growing on, gardeners? It's Saturday, August 26th, and today is the day that I have been waiting for for three years. One of the figs from my fig tree breeding program has ripened its first fruit, and I can't wait to discover this brand new fig variety with all of you. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the bell to receive new video notifications and check out our Amazon store and Spreadshop links in the video description for everything I use in my garden and awesome custom designed apparel and other gear. Your support is greatly appreciated. Here where I live on the southeastern coast of North Carolina, we can only grow female figs that have a genetic mutation for persistence where the fruits are parthenocarpic and they can ripen without pollination. Whoa, whoa, whoa. English, please. What exactly does that mean? Fig trees are very special plants. They exist solely based on a natural phenomenon called mutualism. Fig trees have separate male and female trees. The purpose of the male trees, called capra figs, are to bear male figs that protect and house a tiny wasp called the blastophaga scenes. Basically, male figs are inedible and essentially just wasp colonies. In spring, the breba crop of the male figs, called profici, begin to mature. This crop contains the fig pollen. The female wasps will tunnel out of the figs before they wither and rot. When they emerge, they will be covered in male fig pollen. Their goal is to find another male fig fruit nearby to build into a new wasp colony. Those female wasps that choose correctly maintain the wasp population. Those that choose incorrectly accidentally burrow into the osteole of a female fig by mistake and get stuck and die, and the natural caustic enzymes of the figs will digest the wasp body. This is the process of how figs get pollinated. Remember, that wasp was covered in pollen, and that's the natural way that figs become pollinated in their native habitat. Upon pollination, the seeds inside the female fig will become fertile and each individual seed will grow to a unique new fig tree that is some random cross between the mother tree and the father tree. Now, if that didn't sound complicated enough, here is another challenge. Most fig seedlings in nature are caducus, which means the fruits will drop from the tree if they are not pollinated. However, some male figs carry a genetic mutation that allows fruits to persist on the tree without pollination. That's how the majority of us can grow figs outside of their native range. That little fig wasp is endemic to the Mediterranean, so outside of its native habitat, caducus figs cannot ripen their fruit. The exception, commercial fig farmers successfully established the fig wasp in warm winter valleys of California where figs are produced commercially. Some of our California viewers live in areas where the fig wasp may exist. For the rest of us, we can only grow these persistent female figs that will ripen without pollination because we don't live anywhere near the fig wasp. There are no wasps in any of our figs. Even if you lived in an area that colonized the fig wasp, it entered so early in the life of the fig that it was long since digested by the time you actually eat it. There are more bugs in the head of lettuce that you're buying at the grocery store than in your commercially produced figs. Long story short, as a certifiable figaholic, I started a breeding program over three years ago to begin growing my own figs from seed. Since I don't colonize any fig wasps here in North Carolina, where I live, I had to source a male fig tree that had the genetic mutation for persistence because that genetic mutation can only be passed on by the father. It cannot come from the mother tree. I manually collected the pollen and injected it into some of my favorite female figs. I chose specific fig varieties for the mother trees in hopes to pass on the genetic traits that I found desirable to make the most superior fig offspring possible. Rather than go on for hours and hours about this experiment, I will link down in the video description a complete series that I put together that shows you everything that you need to know about the history of the fig tree in the United States and everything you need to know about how to become a fig tree breeder. Now, let me take you and show you how my new fig tree seedlings are doing. And here are my fig tree seedlings. They are going on their second full summer. And what you see right here are a grand total of 42 figs that I grew from seed. Now, every single one of these fig trees uses the father persistent capra fig, UCR 271-1, also known as Salib. It is a known 
persistent capra fig that has that mutation that can allow some of the female figs to be persistent and ripen fruit without pollination. However, I used all different female figs in here uh, to try and give different traits and give a nice wide selection as to what I'm going to get in terms of offspring. And all the different colored tags that you see in here, they correspond to a different female. So you'll see you have blue tags here, you have pink tags here, I have red tags, I have yellow tags, green tags uh, and they are all uh, the same exact age but because they are seed grown it's going to be completely random when they finally decide to fruit. Now the thing you need to understand when breeding figs is that 50% of the figs are going to be male and therefore not really useful and then of the 50% that are female well only half of them are going to carry that genetic uh, mutation for parthenocarpy. So only about one in four fig trees will actually be a persistent female fig that I will be able to grow here in North Carolina and other places around the world that don't have uh, the fig wasp colonized. So in reality, out of the 42 figs that I'm growing here, only about 10 or 11 of them, in terms of simple math, will actually be figs that I can eat. And of them, probably only about two or three of them would actually be good enough to release because most of what you grow just from seed just will not be exceptional. So after years of work here, I probably will only come away with maybe two or three worthy figs. And that is the harsh reality when it comes to fruit tree breeding. It is really hard work because it takes 10 to 20 years in order to have enough time to properly evaluate many varieties because most fruit trees grown from seed will take seven to ten years just to bear their first fruits and then from there you may need to wait another three to five years for the fruit trees to mature enough to honestly evaluate the quality of the fruit. Now I have a sneaking suspicion that figs will probably be more precocious than most fruits and they will uh, bear fruit at an earlier age than seven to ten years. For whatever reason this fig variety right here bared its very first year and it's bearing again this year even though it's only on this branch. Now I have one other fig tree that is also born fruit but all of the other fruit trees, all these other figs, they have not be, uh, borne any fruit yet. So I'll have to wait at least three years for, uh, for another evaluation of any of these other trees. Who knows, maybe they will take seven to 10 years, I'm not entirely sure. But this is why it's an experiment and it's a lot of fun. Now you will see that I have a hole missing in my fig trees right here because that's the new variety that I can't wait to share with you. And that is the funny looking twisted up fig tree that you see right here. This fig tree right here is on its second year and it is already bearing fruit. So it's already known to be a super precocious early variety, at least for me. And the exciting thing about this tree is that this is a cross between the persistent capra fig Salib and also one of my favorite female fig trees of all time, Del San Wami Gran. Now I have many fig seedlings that are crossed with Del San Wami Gran for a good reason. It is one of my absolute favorite female figs that I own. It is a medium to large fig with green skin and the deepest purple burgundy strawberry like interior that you have ever had. It is absolutely delicious but it has a problem. It is a very late season fig and it is very vulnerable to splitting in rain because it has a very long hang time. This fig needs to hang five to eight days in almost perfectly dry weather to ripen, which we almost never get here in North Carolina during the summer. So for that reason, I was hoping to breed that fig in order to get all the things I love about Del San Wami Gran, but hopefully develop some kind of earlier, more rain resistant fig. And I guess we're to find out if this fig cuts muster. Now for those of you that don't know, the Salib Capra fig is a very large green skin fig. So for that reason, most of the figs that are going to come out of this breeding program are going to be green skin figs. Now because Del San Wami Gran is also a green skin fig, it's safe to say that almost all of the seedlings are going to be green figs and probably on the larger side because the two parents are fairly large. However, that's not to say that they don't have some recessive gene in there to give it a different color or a different size. Either way, I want to take you in for a closer look. Now right away there are a few things that already make me excited about this fig. First of all, it's obviously very early. Second of all, it has a mostly 
closed eye, which is a very good thing uh, in terms of rain resistance and not letting pests into that wide open eye. Now, I noticed that this was getting ripe yesterday and it didn't, it still felt kind of firm. And then I came back to check on it again today and it already has a whole lot of give. And I noticed that it had some ants crawling in and out of the fig. So for that reason, this has me optimistic that it has a much shorter hang time on the fig and maybe it will ripen a lot more quickly. So right away, I already love the looks of this fig. It's also a pretty nice size fig, as you can see in a close up with my thumb right there. So once again, I'll give this one more close up so you can see exactly what this fig looks like. I would say this fig is beautifully ugly or ugly beautiful. So now after a long wait, we're finally going to pick off this fig. So now let's take a close up of this beautifully ugly fig. This probably looks like a 40 to 50 gram fig, a nice medium sized fig that I'm sure has the potential to be a large size fig on a mature tree. And then when we turn it over, we notice that osteol in there. It is not a closed eye, but it is a tight eye. And that is generally good for things like rain resistance and keeping pests out. Although I did notice some little tiny ants crawling in and out of there, which is to be expected on a perfectly ripe fig. And for the record, a perfectly ripe fig should look overripe to the untrained eye. It should feel like a bag of jello, and that is exactly what this fig looks like. So now I'm going to cut into this fig, but before I do that, um, a couple of you have made mention that you feel really uncomfortable when I use a knife on camera. Well, this is one of those as seen on TV, forever sharp knives that don't really cut human skin so I can I can let it sit there and run across my skin I could go like this all day it's not gonna do any kind of damage to my skin so I'm going to cut into this fig right now and I'm expecting a strawberry red interior ooh and that is exactly what I have right here. That is a perfectly ooey gooey strawberry red interior that looks very reminiscent of Del Sanwami Gran itself. And here is a close up of the fig. I hope that you can see that very well. It has a beautiful luscious strawberry interior. It's very jammy. It has some honey in the eye right there. I can't honestly believe how good this fig looks right here. So my goal with this experiment was to basically create an earlier, more rain resistant version of Del San Juan Gran. Everything looks good so far. Now let me see how the taste actually comes out. Wow. Oh my goodness. That is an, all right. That is an, that, that's a dead ringer for Del Sanwami Gran. That tastes like rich strawberry jam. It tastes like strawberry shortcake. It's everything that I truly love about Del Sanwami Gran. I, I don't want to say this because this is such an early fig breeding program and it's only the second one that ripened for me, but that is that would compete with any of my top tier green skin strawberry figs. It's as good as Del Sanwami Gran. It's as good as White Madeira number one. I honestly can't believe how fantastic that was and I don't want to talk this up too much because I don't want to make it seem like I'm just promoting my own breeding program. That's not what I'm doing here. It was really that good. All right, I have the second half of the fig right here and I'm going to give it to Brittany to taste test to give her honest feedback uh, because I want you to all know that I'm not making this up. However, she refuses to appear on camera. So I'm just going to do the microphone duty. Say hi. Hi. Okay, so I'm going to hand her the fig right now. Now, Brittany, I want you to try it. Tell me what it tastes like and rate it on a scale of one to 10. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. It's very good. Well, it's the, sweet. Eat the whole thing. It tastes like jam. What kind of jam? I'm um, strawberry. That's exactly what I thought. Mm, very good. I would give it an eight. An eight. An eight out of ten? Mm-hmm. I thought it was a little bit higher than that, but mm -hmm. okay. Thanks for bringing me back to reality. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for, for undermining my Always. opinion. <laughs> Well, there you have it. Brittany gave it an eight out of 10. She detected the same overall flavor profile that I did. Now, it is worth mentioning that I like figs a lot more than she does, and I get way more excited over them than she does. Um, she probably wouldn't think that Del Senwami Gran is as fantastic as I think it is, but in my opinion, that fig right there was just as good. I could probably put it side by side to Del Senwami Gran, and you wouldn't really be able to tell that big of a difference. Now, that being said, that's basically the first fig that that tree ever put out. 
out. So it could change over the next few years. It could become larger. It could become more early. I don't really know what to expect, but that is one that I'm going to label and definitely keep my eye on because I cannot believe how fantastic that fig was. Once a few years from now go by and I'm able to truly evaluate the fig, I would probably definitely release that for the public because if I could basically develop a more rain resistant earlier variety of Delson Wami Grand, that, that would be close to a top tier fig. Now we're supposed to have rain for the next five or six days straight and I really want to protect that other fig on this tree that is in the process of ripening. So I just moved it over the roof overhang of my sunroom and I labeled this fig uh, both PF on the bottom of this container to keep track of it. That's going to mean Parthenocarpic female. And I labeled this as a possible top tier strawberry fig. Now, I just can't begin to tell you how excited I am about the results of this fig right here. I was going to be happy if I walked away with one or two super high quality figs in this whole experiment. And the fact that I've ripened two figs so far and both of them happen to be common females that will persist and maintain the fruit without pollination, that's like hitting the jackpot. There's basically a 1 in 16 chance that uh, my first two figs are both common females. 1 out of 4 times 1 out of 4. So I'm super excited that I had the opportunity to even develop two fig trees that are brand new varieties, but to have one that's really this good, I'm just blown away. And I hope that you can share and truly feel the excitement that I have uh, because this has been a lot of work and many years to get to this point. So the fact that this experiment to some degree is paying off is just amazing. I sure hope you found this video fun and unique and exciting. I don't think there's anything else like this right now going on in fig land, at least in the United States. And I'm super excited to spearhead this mission and hopefully develop new fig varieties that I can one day share with all of you. So everybody, I sure hope that you found this video helpful. If you did, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and please, ring that notification bell so you're notified when I release more videos like these. For example, I have another fig variety that is ripening in there that I taste tested last year, but if it ripens for me, I'll give it another taste test this year because who knows, maybe it will have matured more and it will wind up being a little bit better. The fig last year didn't blow me away like this one did, but who knows what a year can bring. So if you're curious about any of the products that I use in real life in my garden, they're all linked down on my Amazon storefront in the video description. While you're there, Check out my spread shop for custom merch if you want to support the channel. And like I said, all my other fig breeding tutorials will be linked down in the video description if you want to perform an experiment like this on your own. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see all of you again on the next video. What's wrong, Gail? How come you're sighing so much? Is there something that you want? There's somewhere you want to go. You want to take a stroll around the neighborhood? Is that what you want? Oh, no, 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 no. Not yet, buddy. Not yet. We got to wait. We got to wait. I don't know. I don't know how this beast can be so obsessed with the same circle we take him on every single day. Boy, oh boy, he sure gets excited for the same old routine.